Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another lecture of Physics 114. Uh, today, we're going to be building upon what we learned about Newton's laws last time. So in the previous lecture, we talked about Newton's first and third laws. Today, we're going to focus on the second law. Um, if you are following along with the readings, uh, the reading for today is going to be Chapter 4, Section 5. That's the, the one section we didn't cover last time. It's on Newton's second law, as you might imagine. And then you should also take a look at Chapter 5, specifically Sections 5.2 through 5.5, and also Section 5.7. So what's the plan for today? Well, I'm going to start off with a few questions that are going to review some of the ideas that we learned about in the previous module. And I'll say right now, if you have yet to do the studio for uh, Newton's first and third laws, that's Studio 6, you may want to just pause this recording right now and hold off on uh, watching this video until you've actually done that studio. The conversations we're about to have here with some of these questions are going to kind of uh, ruin the pedagogical experience you'll have working through those questions in studio. So again, if you haven't done that studio yet, just hold off on watching this video. Once we've gone through those questions, we'll of course move on to Newton's second law, and we'll be talking about several of its applications, including some that are gonna set you up for the studio that you'll be doing uh, when you get to Newton's second law. That'll be studio seven. But let's go ahead and start off with some review questions. So as promised, um, here's a question for you. Go ahead, pause your recording, read this question, and then enter your answer into grade scope. Now that you've submitted your answer, let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, the correct answer to this question is A. So on the free body diagram for the cereal, you should have two forces. And on the free body diagram for the basket, you will have three forces. In a few slides, I'm gonna actually show you what those free body diagrams should look like, but I've got a couple other questions I wanna ask you before we get there. Here's one of them. Again, go ahead, pause the recording, read this question, and send your answer over to Gradescope. So this question is actually very similar to a question that uh, we encountered in the previous lecture. And once again, the great temptation is to say that the correct answer is A, that it's a weight force. But A is actually incorrect. Um, the cereal box, it is exerting a force on the basket, but it's not a weight force. Remember how we've defined a weight force here in physics. That weight force is a force that exists between an object and Earth. So the weight of the cereal box is a force that the Earth is exerting on the cereal box. But that's not what I'm looking for here. This question is asking for force that involves the cereal box and the basket. And so just like the question we saw in the previous lecture, the correct answer here is going to be B. It's going to be the normal force. The cereal box exerts a normal force on the basket. Here's another question for you to consider. Please pause your recording, read the question, and send your answer to Gradescope. So in this question, we have to think about the five forces that are going to appear on the two free body diagrams. So notice what we have here. We've got five forces, two of them, the first two in this list here are forces acting on the cereal. The last three are forces acting on the basket. So again, not, not all these forces will appear on the same free body diagram. Those that ended the subscript C will appear on the cereal's free body diagram. Those that end in the subscript B will appear on the basket's free body diagram. And we've got to rank these forces uh, based on their magnitudes from greatest to least. The correct answer here turns out to be D. And you can see that when we uh, take a look at the free body diagrams for both the cereal box and the basket. I'm going to show you that those free body diagrams on the next slide. Here they are. And here's actually a question for you to consider. So before we talk about these free body diagrams in any more detail, please pause your recording and submit your answer to this question on grade scope. So the correct answer to this question is B. The two forces that must have the same magnitude according to Newton's third law are gonna be the normal force that B exerts on C 
and the normal force that C exerts on B. Notice these two forces are the same type of force. That is a requirement in order for two forces to be third law force pairs. They also involve the same two objects, the basket on the cereal and the cereal on the basket. So again, these two forces listed here basically look the same. All I did was I flipped their subscripts. That's basically all you always do when you're looking for third law force pairs. And notice these two forces appear on different free body diagrams. One is on the free body diagram for the serial. One is on the free body diagram for the basket. And again, that will always be the case. Third law force pairs never, ever appear on the same free body diagram. So that means choice A here cannot be correct. The normal force that the basket exerts on the cereal, it does have the same magnitude as the weight of the cereal. They have to have the same magnitude because I know the cereal has no acceleration. And because it has zero acceleration, the net force must be zero. And so the only way for the net force to be zero is for these two forces to be equal to one another in magnitude. So these two forces on the serial's free body diagram are equal due to Newton's first law, not the third. They're equal due to the first law. Now we come over to the um, basket's free body diagram. We, uh, again, I'm trying to draw all my arrows here so that they're qualitatively correct. So this normal force that the serial exerts on the basket, it has the same length as the normal force that the basket exerts on the serial. The weight force of the basket is a slightly longer arrow than the weight force of the cereal. That's because the basket had a greater mass in this situation. And with the basket, um, the net force was once again zero. There was no acceleration for this basket. And so this means that this one upward tension force must be equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the two downward forces here. So that's why in the previous question, that tension force must have had the largest magnitude out of all five forces. Okay, so that's our review of uh, some of the, the ideas that we talked about uh, for Newton's first and third laws. Let's go ahead and move over to Newton's second law. We were introduced to this last time uh, when we encountered all of Newton's laws of motion, um, but just remind, just remind you what Newton's second law says. It says, if the net force acting on an object is not zero, so you've got a non-zero net force, then the object will experience an acceleration. And the net force and acceleration are going to be related by this equation here. It's one of the most important quantitative relationships you will see in all of physics. It says the net force equals the mass times the acceleration. So we talk about uh, writing down Newton's second law. This is how we write it. We say that net force acting on an object equals the mass of the object multiplied by that object's acceleration. Here it is just broken out into more detail. So again, every time you're applying Newton's second law, you've got to be explicit about what object you're applying it to. Whatever object you've picked, that's whose mass you put in for m, and that's whose acceleration you put in for a, and that's whose net force you need to put in over here on the left-hand side of the equation. All right, so let's consider uh, this situation here. Um, we've got a ball of mass m that is gonna be dropped onto a bathroom scale. And I want you to draw the free body diagram for that ball. At the instant, it first starts to come into contact with the scale and begins to slow down. So take a moment and on your own, draw that free body diagram. Okay, I'm not gonna show you what the free body diagram looks like just yet. I've got some questions I want you to think about before I do that. Here's the first question. So go ahead, read this question to yourself, pause the recording, and submit your answer to GradeScope. Okay, we need to think about what type of forces are pointing up on our free body diagram here. In this case, um, if we're talking about the instant the ball comes into contact with the uh, bathroom scale, the bathroom scale should be exerting an upward normal force on that ball. So the correct answer here is C. 
Here's another question for you. Again, pause the recording and submit your answer to Gradescope. So there should be one downward force on your free body diagram, and that should be B, the weight force. So there's gonna be a weight force that the Earth exerts on the ball. That's why the ball was falling down to begin with. Um, but of course, that weight force would be there even if the ball were not accelerating. So the correct answer here is B, the downward force on your free body diagram should be the weight force. And that's due to the Earth acting on the ball. Here's another question for you. Go ahead, pause the video, and send your answer over to Gradescope. So this is often a challenging question for a lot of students. So some students wanna say that, oh, the acceleration is zero meters per second squared. I've got no acceleration uh, because I've got an upward force and it's gotta balance a downward weight force. And that is incorrect. It is absolutely true that you have an upward pointing normal force. And it's absolutely true that you've got a downward pointing weight force. But those two forces are only gonna be equal to one another if the ball is not accelerating, if, if there is no net force. And in this case, there is definitely an acceleration. Notice in the prompt for the question, it says the ball is slowing down. That means the ball is accelerating. So the acceleration cannot be zero. So C is incorrect. Now, another common response that students give is they say, well, the ball is falling down. It was moving down. So the ball's acceleration must be down. And it turns out that answer choice B, down, is also incorrect. Here's what's going on. The ball is definitely moving down. The ball is traveling down as it's uh, moving and encountering the scale. But notice it's slowing down. So its velocity vector points in the downward direction, but because it's slowing down, that means its acceleration must point in the opposite direction. Remember from kinematics, whenever velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, an object speeds up. Whenever they're in opposite directions, an object slows down. So if that ball's acceleration pointed down, that would imply that it was speeding up even after it came into contact with the scale. And we know that's not true. We know it's gonna slow down. So it turns out the correct answer to this question is A, that ball's acceleration will point up and it's gonna point up because the ball is slowing down. The ball's velocity vector points downward, so its acceleration vector must point the opposite direction. It must point up in order for the ball to slow down. Correct answer is A. Here's another question for you to consider. Once again, read this question, pause the recording, and send your answer to Gradescope. So we need to think about the direction of the net force acting on the ball, we can immediately eliminate C. We already discussed on the previous question that the acceleration is not zero. There is a non-zero acceleration going on that this ball is experiencing. So if the acceleration is not zero, then the net force cannot be zero. So C cannot be the correct answer. So now we've got to think about, well, what is the direction of the net force acting on the ball? And once again, some of you might be thinking, well, the ball is moving downward. So surely the net force is pointing down. After all, that, that's the direction the ball is moving in. But that turns out to be incorrect. The direction the net force is actually going to be pointing up. The correct answer here is A. And one way to think about this, and this is a rule, and it's really important, and this is one that's worth remembering. The net force must always point in the same direction as the acceleration. Go back and take a look at Newton's second law. There are only two vectors in that relationship, your net force and your acceleration. So whatever direction the acceleration has, that's gonna be the same as the direction of the net force. They must always point in the same direction. So we just concluded in the previous question that the acceleration is pointing upwards. So the net force must also be pointing upwards. Here's another question for you. Pause recording and please answer this question on Gradescope. So we've got two forces acting on this ball. 
we've got a normal force that the scale exerts on the ball and a weight force that Earth exerts on the ball. We need to determine which one has a larger magnitude. Well, we just said on the previous slide that the net force is not zero. So these two forces cannot have the same magnitude. So C is incorrect. We also determined on the previous question that the net force has to point up. So if the net force points up, that means the upward force must have a larger magnitude than the downward force. So that means the correct answer to this question is A. The normal force of the scale on the ball is going to have a larger magnitude than the weight force that the Earth exerts on the ball. Here's another question I want you to think about. Pause your recording and send your answer to Gradescope. So for this question, uh, it's probably best at this point to actually um, show you my sketch of what the free body diagram looks like. So let me go ahead and switch over to my iPad so you can take a look at my sketch for the free body diagram. So here's my sketch of the free body diagram for the ball at the instant it's come into contact with the scale and when the ball is slowing down. So um, I've got my normal force that the scale exerts on the ball. I've got the weight force that Earth exerts on the ball. Notice I've drawn the normal force to have a larger magnitude than the weight force as we just decided that it should. And so for this question, we need to think about what is the scale going to read at the moment the ball comes into contact with it. And so take a look at these two forces here. Which one of these forces involves the scale? It's this one right here. Out of all any of these forces, either of these forces, this is the only one that involves the scale. So this is what the scale reads. The scale is going to read this, the normal force. A lot of times we like to think that our scale measures our weight, and that is true to an extent. When you step on a scale, what it's actually measuring is the normal force that you are exerting on the scale, which is the same, of course, as the normal force that the scale exerts on you. That normal force will be equal to your weight force as long as you're at rest. If you're not at rest, then those two forces are not necessarily going to be the same. And in this case, the ball is not at rest. The acceleration is not zero. Um, I should revise what I said a moment ago. Um, these two forces will be equal to one another if your acceleration is zero, uh, which could occur if you're at rest or if you're moving at a constant speed. In this case, the ball is definitely uh, not moving with a constant speed. We said it's slowing down. So the scale is going to read this. Remember, your weight force is always going to be equal to the mass of your object times the acceleration due to gravity. So that means the force that the scale reads is going to be some number that's greater than the weight. So the correct answer to this question was C. The scale is going to read a number that is greater than mg. If this seems a little bit funny to you, if you happen to have a bathroom scale where you are right now, go ahead and pause this video and try it for yourself. When you step on the scale and you, want, you let it come to rest, you can read what your weight is. But if you jump on the scale, at the moment your body comes into contact with that scale, it will read a number that is bigger, that is larger than your weight. There is no way to avoid it. So if you happen to have a bathroom scale, go ahead and uh, try that experiment at home. So we've got uh, one more question for this lecture for you to think about. Uh, let's put some numbers into this situation here. Let's say that ball that you've dropped has a mass of half a kilogram. And at the instant of time when the ball is in contact with the scale and slowing down, that scale reads 46 newtons. So I've got a question for you here. Pause the recording and try to answer this question for yourself. And then of course, submit your answer to Gradescope. So when many students do this question for the first time, many of them make a very, uh, the same mistake here. And that mistake is to say, well, okay, I've got Newton's second law, F equals MA. I've been given a force here of 46 Newtons. I've been given the mass of the ball, that's half a kilogram. So let me set 46 Newtons equal to the mass of half a kilogram multiplied by the unknown acceleration. 
to define the acceleration, I'll just take 46 newtons and divide it by half a kilogram. That approach is on the right track, but it's wrong. And it's wrong for this reason. Remember what Newton's second law says, that left-hand side of the equation isn't just force equals mass times acceleration. You don't just get to pick any force that you see in the problem and set equal to the mass times the acceleration. It's equal to the net force. The net force is what you have to figure out here. This 46 Newtons is not the net force. This is what the scale reads at the instant the ball comes into contact with it. Um, that means that 46 Newtons there is the normal force that the scale exerts on the ball. But there's a second force. The second force is going to be the weight of the ball itself. And so your net force is going to be the difference between those two forces. So I've got to take that 46 Newtons, and I've got to subtract off the weight of that ball. I've got to subtract it because those two forces point in different directions. So a full correct analysis to this question is going to look something like this. You do need to apply Newton's second law. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Your net force, however, is the normal force that the scale exerts on the ball minus the weight of the ball. That is what's going to be equal to your mass times your acceleration. And now I can solve this for my acceleration, so I divide both sides by the mass. I know what the weight force is. It's the mass of the ball times the acceleration due to gravity. So now when I plug in numbers here, I've got 46 newtons for the normal force, half a kilogram for the mass, 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity, and then of course I divide it all by the half kilogram mass. And when I do this, I get 82 meters per second squared. So on the previous slide, that corresponds to answer C. So the big take home message here is, don't forget that the left-hand side of Newton's second law is the net force. And so when you're working on the studio for this module, you're gonna see a bunch of questions that have a very similar kind of structure and form and where the analysis is gonna be similar to what we just did here. Remember to always find what the net force is, not just a single force. Figure out what the net force is. That advice will help you in uh, the studio for this module. And uh, that's all for today. Um, on our next lecture, we are going to uh, start talking about various applications of Newton's laws. So that'll be basically our next lecture and then the lecture after that. So if you've got more questions on how to apply Newton's laws to various uh, situations, don't worry, we'll be spending some more time there.